Namaste, welcome yogis. My name is Cassandra and today I'm going to take you through a yin yoga sequence that is meant to support your immune system to really maintain like your overall health and vitality. And we're going to do this by targeting the lymph nodes. So really working on our lymphatic system. So your lymph nodes are mainly concentrated a lot through the inner groin, inner thighs, and then chest as well as armpits, and then also in your neck. And we want this lymphatic flow to go kind of from the bottom up approach. So we're gonna start with some inversions and really working and focusing through the inner groin and then we'll move up to the chest and armpits and finally we'll go into the neck. So this is just again a really wonderful way to support your immune system especially if you find that you're getting sick often. Uh, lymphatic drainage isn't something that I find many people think of but personally I struggle a lot with inflamed lymph nodes. It's something that I've had since I was very little um, and it definitely has affected my immune system. Like whenever they would get inflamed, I'd be more prone to, you know, like catching cold, getting sick, feeling tired and all that stuff. And once I started to implement the poses that we're gonna do today on a more regular basis, especially inversions to really like um, promote lymphatic drainage, I saw a really big decrease in the inflammation in the lymph nodes and I would get sick less and it's just made my health better overall. So highly recommend recommend it. It's definitely worked for me. You do need to be careful when you start to think of yoga as like a, a prescription. You know, I, I'm very hesitant to um, talk about yoga as a cure for anything, but it can absolutely support your overall well-being. So I hope this provides relief to some of you and helps to support your immune system overall. Now, I will ask that you have a few blocks for this practice, and you might also want to have like a blanket if your knees are particularly sensitive can be nice to have something like that and go ahead and place your mat fairly close to a wall we're going to start right away with an inversion with legs up the wall and i'll give you two options for this one but you'll want to have a block so we're working on inner groin first and really kind of sending the blood flow and sending that lymphatic fluid up so we want to invert ourselves and get our hips to be higher than the heart so as you lower closer towards the wall you can put a block underneath your hips just so that your hips are higher than your heart again here. And you don't need to be right up against the wall, but you just want your legs to be able to relax fully. So maybe just letting your heels rest on the wall. You can keep your legs straight in this way, or if you wanted to target more towards the inner groin and make this a little bit more intense, then you can just take a straddle variation of this pose letting your feet dangle out to the side and you should really feel that through the inner groin right where the lymph nodes are just make sure it's not so much intensity that you have a hard time relaxing in the pose and because our lymph nodes are also located under the armpits we're going to engage the arms just a little bit here just by opening the arms out maybe into a little cactus shape. You can have them up overhead or just out to the sides. Just a very, very minor, gentle stretch and opening here. So get yourself as comfortable as you can in this pose. So the principles of yin yoga are to find your edge, to resolve to be still, and to hold the pose. So finding your edge means not going too intense into the stretch. You want to be able to relax fully and breathe deeply. You resolve to be still by letting gravity do the work for you, not fidgeting or moving. And then we want to hold each yin yoga pose for about three to five minutes. But of course, at home, if it's ever too much, please feel free to just come out of the pose. Do whatever you need to do for your own well-being. Deepen your breath and just relax here.
If you had your legs in the straddle variation, like what I'm doing here, just take your time to bend the knees and we'll all come out of this pose. You might pause a little. You can always use your hands to help the knees come in. And I like to just let the thighs drop in towards the chest just for a moment here. And we'll be coming into happy baby pose next. So you can stay exactly facing the way that you are, but just move your block off to the side, off of your hips so that your pelvis can rest on the ground. And then as you widen your knees, you're welcome to just keep your knees drawing in towards your shoulders and towards the armpits, or you can come into happy baby pose by holding on to the big toes or holding on to the soles of the feet. Press your knees away with the help of your elbows and drag the thighs down towards the floor. Try to keep your tailbone and your lower back pushing into the floor so you're not curling and lifting up and relax your shoulders as much as possible. Relax your neck. So just one more pose here, getting into the inner groin. Deep belly breaths. Relax your facial muscles. Begin to release the pose, bend your knees, and just roll over onto one side. Take a little fetal pose, a few breaths here, cradling your head in your arm. Really allowing yourself to process each pose. Not rushing through our transitions. We'll be coming up on two hands and knees. Take your time here. Lifting on up. We'll be coming into a variation of winged dragon pose. So this is where you might want to have something to prop underneath your knee if your knees are quite sensitive and definitely have some blocks somewhere close by towards the top of your mat. So you'll be stepping your right foot to the outer edge of your right palm. And this is where sometimes patting that left knee can be really nice. So wing dragon, instead of having your knee and your toes pointing forward, you want to roll on the outer edge of that right foot. So again, we're going deep through the inner groin and inner thighs, but we're also going to start to try and target the um, chest and armpit lymph nodes. So instead of going directly forward, like we normally would here, start to move your upper body away from that bent right knee. So the knee is pressing down to the side, and then you're gonna take a little side bend, reaching and crawling out through the right fingertips. So the more you reach that right arm out, the deeper you're going to feel the stretch through that shoulder, through the armpit, and a little bit through the chest. And then having your blocks 
either underneath the forehead or underneath the chest can make this a lot easier to hold. But this is, of course, an intense pose. There's no getting around it. This is a sensational yin yoga asana. You are most likely going to feel it fairly intensely. So just make sure that you are finding your edge. So take the time to make adjustments as is required and needed so that once you do settle into the pose, there's no need to fidget or move and you can actually just relax into it as much as is possible. So making space through that right shoulder and armpits and of course, through the inner groin, inner thigh, and outer glutes. Just breathing here. Start with the upper body first. If you are on your forearms, lift back up onto your palms. And again, take your time. We'll transition out, come back to that tabletop pose and maybe coming into a child's pose or you can just step that leg back, making some hip circles, whatever is intuitive and feels good to you here to get the blood flowing again down that right leg. Just notice the effects of this pose on your body, on the right side of your body especially. And we'll ease over to the other side. So have your blocks and your props close. You can pad your right knee and we'll step the left foot to the outer edge of that left hand, pressing the hips forward and down. You can curl your toes up, roll to the outer edge, the blade of that left foot. So the ankle, the knee and the hip are all rotating out externally. And instead of staying forward, you're gonna rotate over towards the right, reach out through your left arm as much as possible as you fold. So getting into the side of the waist, into the armpit, into the shoulder, and maybe propping yourself up here with blocks underneath the chest or underneath the forehead as you fold. It's totally normal for one side to feel a lot more intense than the other. We don't need to have the exact same experience always replicated. So just adjust your props. Your props are there to help you. And try to find some kind of stillness in the pose as you settle down here. Letting your hips be heavy. 
and trying to get gravity to do the work for you. And let's lift back up. Start with the upper body first. Go slowly. Continue to breathe even as you transition. Sometimes coming out of the pose is the hardest part just because we've been here for so long. You can uncurl your mat, maybe pressing back to a little child's pose or stretching that left leg back. Just whatever movements feel intuitive here. We'll come to dangling pose. This is our only standing pose in yin yoga. You can do this with or without blocks. You can even do it against the wall. So you want your feet a little bit wider than your hips and you can bend your knees a lot here. So another inversion where we're letting the um, lymphatic fluid kind of drain and the blood go all the way to the head. And you want to relax your arms either the hands can stay down maybe on a block if the floor is a little bit too far away you can do this against the wall by actually just resting and leaning your hips against the wall especially if you find that your legs have to work a lot here in this pose using the wall can help with that but otherwise just try to soften and let yourself relax here maybe holding on to the elbows We'll try to keep your belly roughly over your thighs. Relax your head. And really do try to relax your neck where those lymph nodes are. Soften through your arms, through your shoulders. And just breathe here. We don't hold this one for too, too long about two minutes right here in the pose.
If you are holding on to your elbows, release your fingertips to the floor, bend your knees. We're gonna come all the way down to take a seat. And just notice here the effects of that pose. Just feel the blood flow kind of release back down. Not rushing, especially if you have lower blood pressure, you want to make sure you pause between the, uh, between the poses, especially inversions. And we'll focus a little bit deeper on the armpits um, and chest, mainly the armpit lymph nodes, coming into shoelace pose with archer arms. And now shoelace pose, you're welcome to leave that out. So you could do this just by staying cross-legged. But otherwise, this is like cow face pose. If you'd like to add a little hip opener, you can stack your right knee over the top of your left one and then arch your arms. So I'll just turn so that you can see what I'm doing in the back. Right arm will extend up to the sky and you're bending into that right elbow. And you're trying to push that elbow back so it points straight up towards the ceiling and you should feel a nice stretch through the armpit here. And then you can reach back with your left hand, maybe interlacing and clasping your palms. You can also use a strap or you can also just kind of hold on to your clothing if there's a bit of a gap there behind you. I'll just turn back here but the emphasis is really on that right armpit. And if the legs are too much, you can just do this from sitting on your heels or in a cross-legged position. We're really mainly focused on the archer arms here. So keeping the spine up nice and tall, think of pulling that elbow back, lifting it up and settling in here. When you breathe, try to feel your rib cage expand front to back and side to side. Almost as if you could breathe directly into that right shoulder and right armpit, right into that lymph node. Let's carefully release the clasp of the hands first. Just let your right arm come back down. It might feel good just to roll that shoulder back a little. And we're gonna uncross the legs if you're doing the shoelace variation of the pose. Maybe just let your knees drop side to side or you can straighten your legs out in front of you. Just whatever feels good here. And we'll go to the second side. So this time, if you were doing shoelace, your left knee would stack over the top of the right one. And as you lengthen your spine, 
you're going to reach your left arm up this time bend into that left elbow and keep trying to push that elbow back and lift it up without puffing the chest forward so keep your front ribs in while still maintaining that lift and then right arm goes behind you maybe to hold on to the fingertips or to the hands or you can just hold on to some clothing or use a strap totally normal for one side to be a completely different sensation especially if it's your non-dominant hand you might feel more or less tightness just try to breathe into it Carefully release the arms first. Shrug the shoulders back. And we'll release the legs as well. And before we come into Shavasana, we'll finish by really emphasizing the um, lymph nodes in the throat. So kind of just underneath the jaw here, you might even be able to feel yours if they're inflamed at this time. So coming into a seated neck release. So sit in any way that works for your hips and for your lower back. Think of lengthening your spine, rolling your shoulders down and away from your ears. And we'll stretch the right side of the neck first. So you can drop your ear towards your shoulder. Keep your chin just slightly lifted so it's roughly parallel to the floor. And this might be enough already, or you can crawl the right fingertips out and maybe use your left hand to just pull the ear gently away from that right shoulder, creating some space here. Try not to clench your jaw. Notice if you round forward in your spine, just sit up tall, neutral spine. We're just focusing on our neck. And breathe here.
and use your left hand to cradle your head and slowly lift it all the way back to center and we'll go and switch sides so this time stretching the other side of your neck lift up tall and then you can drop right ear towards the right shoulder chin slightly lifted here left fingertips can crawl out to the side to find more length and maybe your right hand just helps to guide the ear away from the shoulder not tilting into a side bend i'm keeping my shoulders over my hips just really isolating where that lymph node resides soften your jaw your tongue your cheeks push your left shoulder down as you hold here lift the head all the way back up to center and just give yourself one last little shoulder shrug here and we'll come all the way down onto our backs setting ourselves up for Shavasana our final resting pose and just because we are working on lymphatic system here I like to do a Shavasana with the arms up overhead. If that's not comfortable to you, just keep your arms by your sides. Check in to see what you feel like doing the most. So while it might not feel like there's a lot going on in Shavasana, it truly is the most important pose that we do in any given yoga class. No matter which style of yoga you're practicing, yin or vinyasa, doesn't matter. But we don't want to skip this important pose. This is like digesting after a big meal. Shavasana is the pose that allows you to really process the work that you've done physically, mentally, emotionally, and also energetically. So just let yourself surrender fully here as you come back to a natural breath rhythm and just letting yourself process the practice.
Begin to deepen your breath. Move a little through your fingers and through your toes. You can turn your head side to side. Stretch out really long from your fingers down to your toes. And we'll come up to take a seat once more here. Roll to the side, push your hands into the floor to come up. And sitting up nice and tall. Hands can come together at the front of your heart. And we'll close our practice with the chant of Om one time, inhaling to chant, big breath in. Day. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this yin yoga practice with me all about your lymphatic system and overall immune health. I hope you enjoyed it. Do leave me a comment down below. Let me know how this went for you. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. You can just click that red subscribe button. It's a great way to support free yoga on the internet. And I have a new mobile app. You can go to the app store on your phone and search for Yoga with Cassandra. Um, there's lots of exclusive content on there that you can't find on YouTube. And you can also use our calendar and uh, download classes for offline use and a bunch of other good stuff. Watch them without ads. Um, so I hope you'll enjoy it. A lot of work went into that app and I'm really proud of it. So, all right, that's it. Thank you so much. And I hope you'll practice again with me soon. Namaste.